Hey guys, testing, testing. Can can everyone hear me clearly? All right, can everyone hear me clearly? Oh yeah, come here, come here. Just give me a second. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> testing, testing. Hey Alex, nice to see you again then. Right. Uh okay, well, we got a uh, quite a big turnout today, right? Uh can I, hey, is this uh Potranin? Uh Volodmir. Yeah, get a name right, Volodmir. Uh nice to see you guys tune in. Hey, Cleared. Um, so guys, um you should be able to see a chat section there. So you're gonna see me, uh you're gonna see me send a message through, right? Um, you can actually choose a drop down between everyone. And host and panelists, right? So you can you can choose everyone instead, so everyone can see your messages. Uh, it's more beneficial when um, when everyone's able to see uh, each other's questions. And it's nice to see a whole bunch of you guys around, you know, asking each other's questions too. Hey, Richie, right? Nice to see you tune back in again. I've seen you around in the previous webinars. <laughs> uh, nice to see you back here. Um, okay, okay, that's great, man. I see uh, quite a number of familiar names over here, right? Um, is anyone here for the first time? Right, or has anyone been to my webinars before? Right, has anyone been to my webinars before? Right, let me know. Hey, hey, Carmen, right? Uh, first time here. Nice, nice. Welcome. Uh, welcome to the webinar. <laughs> welcome to the webinar series. Right, hey, all right. Nice, nice. Jeffrey, uh, Robert, is, is, is that, is Etwan? Is that how you pronounce your name? Etwan? I'm not sure if I got a name right. Jasper, hey, nice to see you guys here. Lungil. Um, we've got Prince, we've got Mustafa. All right, a lot of first timers here. A lot of first timers here. Uh, sorry, I, I'm pretty I'm pretty sure it's French, right? Etoine, it should be French. Right? Just uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I I took some French courses in the past, but my French colleagues told me not to butcher the language. <laughs> I try, I try. Antoine, no Antoine. Uh, it's like all right. Okay, Jean. Uh oh, from the beginning of the series, nice. Nice to see you tuning in all the way. All right, we've got Selako. And we got Yulisa. Nice to see you guys here. Okay, good stuff, man. Good stuff. Um, um, let me see. Okay, I've just let the rest of uh, the people just tune in. Let me just move my stump stuff around. Okay. Hey, Ashka. Nice to see you tune in. Right. Um, today's webinar. All right. Today's webinar is the ultimate. I got tongue tied there, right? It's the ultimate Forex uh, trading masterclass. Okay. In this masterclass, we're going to teach you how to trade um, Forex uh, much better uh, in a much um, much more in-depth way uh, compared to what you find on stuff like Baby Pips or Forex Factory, right? We kind of take things up a level. And today, we're actually touching on a really interesting topic, right? Because um, when it comes to a trade, you know, we, we put in entry, we put in stop loss, we take profit. Um how many of you guys, right? How many of you guys have a fixed stop loss? Meaning that when you take a trade, you use like 50 pip, stop loss 50 pip, take profit. Um, maybe you guys can share with us in the chat, like how many of you guys uses, uh, use like a fixed stop loss and take profit level? Or if you don't, let me know, right? Are you a fixed stop loss guy or are you a dynamic uh, stop loss and take uh, profit guy? Ashga says he yeah he never uses a uh, fix. Winston says uh one is to three risk reward. Uh, at one dynamic and fixed dynamic. Alex is dynamic. Hmm. You don't. Jeffrey uses a fix. Uh, fix stop loss and take profit. All right. Okay, guys. Um. Dynamic, dynamic. Oh, most of you guys dynamic depends on what the trade and the strategy. Good stuff, man. I'm glad to see quite a number of you guys um, say that you use dynamic. Okay. And in today's webinar, I'll be talk, I'll be showing you um, there are many situations where sometimes you get stopped out and the market goes in your favor. And then you're thinking, oh man, you know, why why did the market stop me out? You know, is it 
is it being manipulated, right? Is it, you know, am I being stop hunted? You know, why do I get stopped out and the market just goes in my favor? Or the other way around, where it just misses your take profit by a bit and it goes to your entry or maybe it goes to your stop loss and you get pissed off, right? So today, in today's webinar, we're going to address some of these things, right? From an institutional trader's perspective, right? What are the lessons I can teach you guys to instantly improve uh, your trading profitability, right? It's all down to, uh, to stop loss take, and take profit placement, okay? Now, of course, uh, for those of you guys who are here for the first time, right? Um, a quick introduction of myself. My name is Desmond Leong, right? Um, Three tips to better stop loss and take profit placements uh, I'll be covering today, right? I also run the uh, an award-winning research firm, Everest Fortune Group, right? We're finalists for 2019, 2020, 21 for um, best FX research and 2020 and 2021 for best equity research, all right? Um, if you guys want to find me on Instagram, I think I have my handy-dandy pen over here. You can find me uh, on at uh, Comfy Desmond, C-O-M-F-Y, uh, followed by my name Desmond, right? Comfy Desmond, if you want to find me there. Nothing much. It's just mainly me, my cat, my wife, my and my newborn kid, right? Yeah, so you can you can find me there on Instagram, right? Uh, nothing much. I'm not like those Instagram traders and stuff. So it's it's pretty it's pretty tame stuff there. Okay. But if anything, if there's anything I want to share with you guys, right, you can tell I'm pretty young, right? And uh it's not like I'm 30 years um in Goldman Sachs or 30 years on Wall Street uh, to be a profitable trader, right? You just need 30 days learning the right stuff and you can be a profitable trader, right? I've been there, done that, right? And if there's anything I'd want to encourage you guys that, you know, when it comes to trading, right? It's not like the world of academia, right? And this is a mistake that we, um, people who are very smart, um, they, uh, a mistake that they, that they tend to make is that in the world of studying, in the world of academia, the more you study, the better you do, right? It makes sense, right? You know, the more you study, right? I read this book on maybe statistics. The more I read it, right? The better I'm going to do. But in the world of trading, it's very different. You can read and can read and can read. You can read the right, you know, you can read all the stuff on all the forums, all the different trading wizard books, market wizards, right? And you can still lose money. Right, because in trading, it is the first thing you need to do is you need to understand that it's very different from the world of academia. They're not relate, they're, they're, they're not positively correlated, right? In trading, you can learn the wrong stuff, which is the dangerous thing. You can spend three months learning some funny strategy that some funny guy created in his basement, and you can lose money, right? So that's the thing with trading, you can learn the wrong stuff. Okay. So it is very important to exercise proper discretion when it comes to trading. Uh, when it comes to trading, learn the right stuff. I've seen people who've traded for 20 years, right? And they're still unprofitable. If anyone dedicated the same amount of time to studying one subject out there, they'll be a professor, right? They'll be a professor, you know, they'll have like their own doctorate degree or something like that. But if you spend 20 years, people can spend 20 years studying trading and still lose money. And the reason is because you can learn the wrong stuff in trading, right? But if the, the great thing about that is that when and if you learn the right stuff, right, you can become a profitable trader much faster than many people. And that is what I'm going, uh, that's what this trading masterclass is meant to focus on, right? We have a special partnership with TakeMill where we bring you guys the good stuff, the juicy stuff. My team, you know, we provide research for banks, for brokers, right? Treasury departments, right? We work with the institutions and we're showing you guys from an institutional perspective how you can, you know, be a better trader, okay? Now, let's, uh, a few key places I want to point you to, right? A few key places that I want to point you to. I keep repeating myself. Give me a second, all right? A TakeMill YouTube. So when you search for TakeMill YouTube, Right, I'm going to give you the channel. We do have a handy dandy channel over here, playlist. Um, this is one of it. Uh, I think we can use this. Oh no, not, not this is the wrong one. Uh, it's this one. I'm going to send you this list. Okay, go check it out. Um, go check it out. Right. So it contains. Uh, if you missed the previous webinars, because quite a number of you guys mentioned that uh, this is your first webinar, right? Please go tune in here. Right, I teach you quite a bit of the introductions, technical analysis 101, fundamental um, support and resistance, right? So some pretty fun stuff that you can go through. 
Okay, if you haven't got the time, please go through it. All right. So this is one of the key things that you want to do. The next thing is you want to go to um, tickmill.com. You want to go to client tools, webinars. Under webinars, right? Scroll down, scroll down. We have, uh, we have next week, same time, same place. We have the, another ultimate Forex trading masterclass. I'm going to send it to you guys here um, to go register for it, right? But it's something which will put you onto, um, onto a series. We'll, we will continue to add onto the series for more and more people to come in. Next week is pretty fun, right? It's actually a live trading session, right? Hopefully by then we will have our VIP room ready for you guys, right? But it's a live trading session where we can actually take on the markets together, right? Uh, our, um, if you have questions on the market, if you have questions on trading strategies, you can ask it. I can help you diagnose it there and then. So it's pretty fun stuff, all right? Pretty fun stuff. That those are the few key links that you want to take a look at, all right? Now guys, I do want to encourage you, um, if you have questions, please send it throughout the webinar. Um, all the daily, as Mr. Patrick on behalf of Take Me. All the daily analysis on Mr. Patrick on behalf of Take Meal. Um, could you repeat that question again, uh, Ashka? It sounds like a statement more than a, uh, more than oh, um, oh the daily analysis, right? Uh, I believe when you go into a where is it? A uh, technical analysis. Uh, the technical analysis block. You know, you can see who is the author below. So most of it, uh, it's kind of me. We got Oleg. Right. Once in a while, we got uh, Mr. Patrick Munelli. Uh, he's a great guy. He's really, really uh, one of the best traders I've seen. Right. But yeah, you might even find him in the VIP room when he's ready. But you can come into the Tick New blog. You can see some of our trading ideas over there. Okay. Now, um, let's continue on to the web, uh, yeah, to the uh, session. All right, guys. Uh, once again, I want to encourage you guys. I literally have another screen that is open over here just to take your questions. So anytime you have a question, don't wait until the end of the webinar to send it through. Send it right away so I can answer it. And of course, right, feel free to just talk and send messages throughout the entire webinar. Otherwise, you'll feel like I'm talking to myself and they'll be very sad. Right? So yeah, you know, I'm, you can tell I'm a very chill guy. Anytime you have questions, don't worry about it. Just ask it. Right? I'll do my best to get to it. Right? I saw a question by Robert. I don't know what's the dynamic of fixed stop loss really first time for you. No worries. I will do my best to explain it to you over here. Okay? Now let's begin today's session. A few things we're going to talk about, right? First, um, fix stop loss and take profits, right? Fix stop loss and take profits. What's the right way? What's the wrong way? Then we talk about dynamic stop loss and take profit placements, a few ways to do it. Risk allocation, how much should you risk on a trade, right? I will really, really debunk some of the myths over here. Ideal lot size to trade. And we have a giveaway at the end. We have a nice little giveaway price at the end, right? Uh, so do stay until the end because I'm going to give away some of the pretty awesome trading tools. Um, uh, Mako is asking where can you access the slides you're sharing on the screen? Well, you can access it on YouTube once, I, once it's uploaded. All right, you can access it on YouTube once it's uploaded. Now, stop loss placement. Okay, stop loss placement, right? So when it comes to trading, when it comes to trading, one of the mistakes that people tend to do is that they focus purely on the entry. They are so focused on the entry, right? They say, okay, this need to be done. You know, Ichimoku, stochastic, support and resistance, right? Pivot point, what parabolics are. You know, they, they have this checklist requirement that once they have checked off all of those things, they're like, okay, where's my mouse? All right, you know, check it off, check it off, check it off, check it off, check it off. Now I'm going into my trade. I go into the entry, right? But once they got into the entry, their stop loss, and they take profit, it is like it is like an afterthought, right? They're like, okay, you know, I'm just going to throw a stop loss and take profit there. That's about it, right? But the truth is, your entry, your stop loss, your take profit are all equally important. They are all equally important, right? And there is, of course, in advanced trade management, which we'll cover in the future, there's break even, there's partial profit, there's idea and validation. Let's cancel trade. It actually goes a lot more. So when I'm taking a trade, I go into where's my entry stop loss when I take profit? Where's the level I go break even? At what level do I take part of my profits out? At what level do I invalidate the idea and try to get off the trade as quickly as possible? And what level do I cancel this trade? So in a trade, it is actually a lot more 
complex than just your entry and your stop loss and take profit. Today's webinar will be focusing on stop loss and take profit, which are two of the really, really big things which are often uh, misunderstood, right? Um, Alex Gum, right? Uh, how recession has led to central bank rising rates? I will answer that towards the end of the webinar because that is more, uh, that is not related to uh, the trade management uh, question. But if I have time at the end of the webinar, do remind me, ping me again, I'll try my best to answer it, but I do know the answer to it, all right? Okay, um, so, so I lost my train of thought. A, uh, um, entry, stop loss, take profit. Yes, okay, so one of the problems, one of the problems that you often notice is that when you go into a forum, you go into a forum, you go into baby pips, you go into Forex Factory, you know, you go into one of the... Uh, what, 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 what's some of the, they got a three duck trading system or keep it simple system. They have all these different trading strategies there, right? When you go onto one of it, right, they'll tell you, okay, when you have a moving average crossover, let's, for example, for example, right? You have a moving average crossover, 100 pip stop loss, 100 pip take profit, right? You like the trade work in your favor, right? So they have this kind of trading strategies or there are some trading strategies where you have a, um, 10 pip stop loss and your take profit is just one is to three, right? 30 pip take profit. You just multiply it by three times. Some of you guys, you know, when you take a trade, you know, you put your stop loss and then you're like, all right, my trading mentor um, told me that I need to have a risk to reward of one is to two. So if I'm risking 10 pips on my stop loss, I need 20 pips on my take profit, right? So that is what, that, those are some of the um, things that the retail trading world kind of feeds you right, to believe the wrong stuff, right? It's like drinking the Kool-Aid, right? It makes you a bad trader by doing that, right? I'll be showing you why in a moment. Um, we, we got Lungil saying, what do you do if you have a very small account? Most of my trades reach the stop loss and then it's a reversal and miss my TP. I already lost my money. My loss is much greater than my profits. All right, so yeah, this is where I'm going to answer you. Why does this happen, right? Why does this happen? Why do, why do you have an entry over here? Let's say you're expecting prices to bounce up. This is your take profit. This is your stop loss, right? Why does, why does this happen? Why does price come down, touch your stop loss, and then go up to your take profit? Why does this happen so often, right? And it's, it's not something that is not an observance that only I notice. Everyone happens to notice this thing, like why do I get stopped out? And then price reverses in my favor. Right, it's almost as if you know there's this all stock hunting, market manipulation thing, right? You know, there's smart money and stuff. There is some truth to it, but I let me explain it to you. Uh, the psychology on why it happens. Okay, let's go to um this. This is a chart I live and die by. Okay, if you notice that there's a major resistance, right? Like super simplistic terms, right? You know, price has reversed off this level one time. Price has reversed off this level two times. Right, what we should do is our stop loss should always be beyond. Put your stop loss beyond a key level. In this example, I'm just using swing highs. Some people use Fibonacci, some people use um, Elliott Wave, some people use a uh, harmonics. But in this example, I'm just using swing high resistance. Okay, when you notice there's a resistance, what we do is we put our stop loss slightly beyond that level, right? Because what happens is that price tends to be attracted to this area has a lot of fighting around this area and then it goes down. So what most people do is that they put a stop loss right at this level or they put their stop loss slightly before. So they get, you know, they get knocked out of the trade and then price goes down. The opposite is true for take profit, which we'll touch on later, right? Let's just say we notice price bounce up once, bounce up twice and bounce up three times from here. So we know that this is a very strong support level. Okay, it's a pretty strong support level. What we need to do is we need to put our take profit slightly before. Stop loss is beyond. Take profit is before. We put it slightly before this key level because what we want to do is we want to get out of the trade before the fighting occurs over here because when price comes to this level, a lot of fighting can occur. It can reverse from here. It can reverse from here. It can reverse from here, right? But there will be fighting here. Anytime there's a key level, this is what I call magnetic levels. Magnetic. I'm going to draw a magnet, right? I think it looks something like that. It looks quite terrible. But yeah, it's a magnetic level, right? And you got, you know, it gets, it attracts price to it, 
right? So this can happen in the other way, you know, it attracts price, right? And then, you know, there's a whole stop out level. Um, everyone gets stopped out over there and you want to put your stop loss slightly beyond to give yourself that little bit of breathing space. Um, Eduardo is asking, does this happen for both short and long positions? Yes, in this example, this is a short position because short position, right? Our stop loss is higher, our take profit is below, right? For long positions, your take profit will be over here, right? Your take profit will be before and your stop loss will be slightly beyond, okay? In this example, it's a short position. All right, now let's go into some examples, right? So let's imagine this is this happens way too often, right? This is a recording one of the charts, one of the trades that we looked at. We notice that there's a nice little support level over here. Price bounce off once, price bounce off twice. Two pretty nice bounces, okay? We look at this as the entry, right? Look at this as the entry. The moment price breaks out from this level, we decide, hey, we are going to buy and we expect prices to go all the way up to here, to our take profit over here. Our strategy, right? Our strategy that we, we, um, we saw on baby pips, right? Our strategy, you know, says that use a fixed stop loss of 100 pips, okay? As you can see over here, use a stop loss of 100 pips, which is right above this nice little support level over here, right? So this yellow thing is our stop loss. Okay, this yellow thing is a stop loss. Can you see? Right? So this yellow thing is a stop loss over here. And I'll take profits all the way up here. Okay? Now, price then drops. It drops, it drops, it drops, it drops, it drops. It touches your stop loss. You can see it touches your stop loss over here. And then it bounces up. Does this seem very familiar? Yeah, your stop loss is the yellow thing over here. Right? Does this happen too familiar? Right? You know, price stops you out and then just goes in your favor, right? So what you need to do instead, what you need to do instead is to have your stop loss, you should place your stop loss slightly beyond a key level of support or resistance. Put it slightly beyond as you can see over here. So that allows us to give us a little bit of breathing space, you know, when price is fighting around here, right? To prevent yourself from getting stopped out. Okay, this is a very, very important rule. It's often overlooked by many people, right? Because price always tends to be attracted to this level. Price tends to get attracted to key levels of support and bounce off them. So you can see over here, price really got attracted to this level and it bounced up from there, right? So we put, if you put our stop loss, um, in this example, if you put our stop loss at 100 pips, right? So this is a problem. When you put it at, at 100 pips, you are just blindly placing it at 100 pips. Do you think, do you think the market will look at your trade and say, you know, hey, Mr. Lungil, right? Um, looks like you have put your stop loss at 100 pips. I am not going to stop you out because, you know, it's at 100. No one likes to go to 100, right? No, no, no one ever does that. The market doesn't care where you put your stop loss, right? The market doesn't care whether some guru um, that you've learned, you know, um, drives a Lamborghini tells you <laughs> that uh, your stop loss is at 100 pips and hence he will not stop you out. The market doesn't care. Remember, the market can stay irrational longer than it can stay liquid. Okay? So in this case, one key thing that you can do is to put your stop loss slightly beyond a key level. Okay? Lungi is asking, is it advisable to move your stop loss? No, it's not advisable to move your stop loss unless you're moving it closer. You're tightening your stop loss slightly better, right? There's no point moving it further away because when you're moving it further away, it's one of the worst things to do, right? That means you, you are, you know, you're, you're, you are playing, you know, you, you should never move your stop loss further away, okay? I uh, should try not to, that's bad risk management, okay? Now, um, back to here, take profit placement is the same thing, right? Take profit placement, I see one big swing high, two big swing high, remember what I said? Put your take profit before a key level, okay? Before a key level over here. Now, the reason for that is because of this. Let me just show it to you over here. We got price, react off one time, react off two times, okay? Now, imagine if our strategy requires us to have a fixed take profit at 100 pips. So this is our take profit right up here. 
So this will pick, pull or take profit slightly beyond the strong resistance level over here. So we are expecting prices to go up from here. We're expecting prices to go up from here. What happens next? Okay. If we place a take profit here, you know, you notice that price went all the way up to here, right before the, you know, 90 pips, not 100, but 90 pips, then it dropped all the way down. So this is a perfect example of what can happen, right? Price reverse right before you take profit because you put it at a key resistance level. Price tends to panic every time it reaches this level and it tends to reverse, right? So if you put our take profit slightly before, you know, we will have got a profitable trade in this scenario. The lesson we need to learn is don't blindly, don't blindly follow a fixed take profit target just because, you know, some forums told you to do so. Okay, let me see the example over here, right? You can see this, Price shot up, missed our take profit, and then it went back down. Because price tends to reverse off big areas of resistance and support. Okay, I'm just gonna... Okay, I'm back, right? Um, so yes, this is, this is for take profit placement. Now, any questions so far? Okay, we got a question from Yulisa. In most cases, you do it on a H4 timeframe and daily. Well, not necessarily true, right? I do do it on the H4 timeframe. Uh, this is universal, right? Meaning you can apply this on the H4 timeframe. You can apply it on the one day timeframe. You can apply it on the 15 minute timeframe the laws are universal, meaning that this chart that you see over here can be a H1 chart. I could tell you it's a H4 chart. I could tell you it's a one-day chart. It's all the same. But the resistance levels that you identify, you know, as long as you obey the same rules, resistance level on H4, put it slightly beyond. Resistance level on H1, put it slightly, uh, put it slightly before, right? You take profit slightly before. Remember, take, where's my rules? Stop loss beyond take profit before. If you need to write it down on a post-it note, please do it, right? It will help you be a better trader. Okay? <laughs> now, guys, um, one thing we're going to do next, right? I'm going to come down to here, right? A take profit placement. So this is another example, right? Big swing high resistance. Big swing high resistance. So we got a long position over here. You notice price tends to go all the way up. Price tend to reverse of before a big resistance level. So you notice that, imagine you got this much of the trade correct. You got practically maybe 90% of the trade correct, right? You got 90% of the trade correct. And then it just reverses right before your take profit is, you know, you just miss your take profit just by that few pips. It happens so often, right? If you think about it, it just happens so often, right? But, but in this case, always put your take profit before any key resistance and support level, okay? Some of you guys were asking, what is a dynamic uh, take profit placement, right? Let me show you an, an advanced way. We will cover more about this in the future webinars, right? When I go into Fibonacci, when I go into um, Elliott Wave, I go into Harmonics, I go into Fibonacci Confluence, but let me just show you what I mean by this. Usually, maybe this is a normal trade, okay? We have our entry over here. We have our stop loss over here. We have our take profit at the swing low over here. Okay, let me show you what dynamics, um, dynamic take profit placement is. I'm not sure how many of you guys have used Fibonacci before, but if you have used Fibonacci, it is a great way. It's a great way to um, forecast. It's a great way to forecast your take profit um, and stop loss to fine tune, sorry, to fine tune your stop loss and take profit placement. Okay, now, Price has entered here, okay? Price has been triggered and now we expect prices to drop. Our original stop loss is, our original take profit is over here, right? So what we do is I do a Fibonacci projection, starting point over here, middle point, ending point. This might not make sense to you, but just let me show you what I mean. And then from there, I got a starting, middle, ending. I have a 78.6 Fibonacci projection that comes to here. My take profit would then be moved up to here. So I would then move my take profit, boing, 
you know, it just comes up to here. I put my take profit, you notice is right before a key level. Okay. Then from here, what happens is that price drops down, drops down all the way, touches the take profit, you know, and then it bounces up. How far does it bounce up? It bounces up all the way. This is what I mean by dynamic take profit placement, right? Don't just put take profit at a key level, right? If you know how to use Fibonacci, which I'll be teaching you guys in the future, this is a great way. It's a great way to really fine tune your take profit. So even though you're putting it before, you know, you know that instead of just putting it before a key level, I need to put it before the 78.6 level, right? That really helps you fine tune it. There are many ways you can fine tune your take profit. I'll be teaching you guys more of it uh, in the future webinars, right? But this is already a great way, right? For you to be able to fine tune your take profit so that, you know, you don't get, uh, you know, you don't, the price don't reverse right before you take profit and go all the way to hit your stop loss. All right, this is a great way um, um, to fine tune it. Now, moving on to the next part over here, risk allocation. I love this. I love this part, right? I love this part of risk allocation. Okay, now, can you guys tell me how much do you usually risk on a trade? Please send it in the chat section. How much do you usually risk on a trade? Rodelio is saying, you know, you got one to 2%, Richard, 1%, Jeffrey, 2%. Okay, Meko, 1%, Eduardo, 1%. Man, you guys are really, um, you guys are really, uh, what's the word for it? Conservative traders, 1%, 2%, 3%, 0 0.25, max 5%, by Andrew, Edison, max 5%, right? Okay, wow. Really good uh, risk management review guys here. All right, Cobana, all right, Richard, uh, come in, uh, or one percent, uh, Carmenita one percent depends on the capital, right? It does, it should not depend on your capital, right? It should not depend on your capital, rather. <laughs> Ulyssa at 10 percent, we got a risky trader here, Alex at three percent. Okay, Thai fund at three percent, one three. Now, let's go for a scenario here, guys. All right, we got a roulette table, right. Not sure how many of you guys been to a casino roulette table, but basically what happens is that you have a nice little ball over here. It gets spun. There is There are 18 red, there's 18 black and one green. As you can see, black, 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 red, red, you know, red, 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 and one green. The probability if you bet on black, the probability of you being correct, if I'm not wrong, is about 48%. You got a, about a 48% chance of being correct and a 52% chance of being wrong. Okay? I am giving you $1,000 to gamble. I'm giving you $1,000 to gamble. Okay? You have to, you have to gamble. And you only, ha you only have one chance to take a, you know, to, uh, okay, you only have one chance to take a trade. How much are you going to put into this? Um, uh, how much are you going to bet on black? I just want to get a gauge on everyone's um, risk level. All right. We got Tefun at $100, which is about 10%. Michael putting about $20. Okay. That is correct, Richard. Good, good trading mentality there you shared with everyone. At one, $10, $18 by Rodelio. Very interesting number. Alex at 20%, 200, all right? $18. Yeah, I wonder how to come up with 18, right? Prince at $10. Okay, quite a number of you guys are betting on the slightly lower amount. Okay, we got Robert with um, $10. Eduardo at $10, right? Okay, most of you guys are actually risking about 1%, which is about $10. Okay, now, now guys, let's... I, I now have a special roulette table for you guys, okay? So most of the people here bet about anywhere $10 to $20 with the odd um, numbers being maybe $100 here and there. I have a modified roulette table. This is my new roulette table. It has 32 black, four red, as you can see, four tiny red and one green. You have the same $1,000, but you only get one chance. How much are you going to bet on a roll? of black. Anyone want to take a guess? Or they'd rather just share with us your answers.
guys. Anyone want to share how much they'll be betting? We got Christoph at 100. Well, Carmen going in big at 300. Prince now 100. Richie going 500. Get the rest. <laughs> right. 800 by Tayfoon. Michael still 10. Right. Still bad. Less than 10 by Richard. Well, we got 500, 500, 100, 600. Alex in at all 1,000. I thought you were going to bet. Eh? Oh. Oh yeah, Alex is in a thousand eight hundred due to large probability of winning. I love the mathematical side of you guys. Much bigger numbers, much bigger numbers, right? At one zoo playing in safe at eighty dollars. I think it was ten dollars previously. Now it's at eighty, right? So we got five hundred, we got eight hundred, got two hundred. We agree that most of the bets now are bigger. Most of the bigger bets. Right? <laughs> Richard, you only got one chance. I'm only allowing you to roll one chance on this roulette table. Okay, just, and then once you roll on this magical roulette table, you will go back to, you know, 18 red and 18 black. Are you sure you only want to raise $10? <laughs> Are you sure you only want to raise $10 on this one magical roll? Okay. Now, guys, um, <laughs> one chance to roll it all, $1,000. Okay, Michael is saying, interesting point, higher you bet is becoming a gamble, not a trade. Now, here is the interesting thing about trading. Trading is a game of probability. Gambling is a game of probability. They are both games of probability, right? It depends on how much of an edge, how high your probability you are on being correct. Okay? It depends on how. Um, yes, there is luck in trading. As there is luck in gambling, there's always an element of luck. There's always the element of probability that you can never account for. You can never say something is 100% correct. You cannot look at all the analysis, right? And say, all right, this is 100% going to be correct the same way. That is why in this example, I did not do 37 black and zero red and zero green. I didn't do it in this example because that would mean you have a 100% chance of being correct, which does not exist in the world of trading. You can be super duper confident, but you can never be 100% confident. But what you can be is you can be super confident based on your analysis. So when it comes to trading, right, you must think about trading like in a law game of probability, like in roulette, right? You have one checkbox, you have two checkbox, you have three checkbox, you have four checkbox, you got five checkboxes, right? So one checkbox, is there a trend line? Another checkbox is there support and resistance. Another checkbox is there Ichimoku Kinko Hill. Another checkbox is there Fibonacci. Another checkbox is there an oscillator, right? So when you're trading, maybe if you only have one checkbox, right? The, you have a low chance you don't even trade. You have two checkboxes, maybe it might be worth risking 1% on this trade. You have two, three checkboxes, now it's maybe worth 1.5%. Right, and four checkboxes is worth two point five percent. Three checkboxes worth three percent. No, five checkboxes. Then you go for three percent. The more checkboxes you check off, right, the higher your chance of being, you know, of having a profitable trade. That is the thing you need to come to terms with when it comes to trading. Right, you need the game of trading is not binary. It's not zero slash one. It's not zero slash one. The game of trading is a case of zero slash one slash two slash three. That means you don't take a trade, but when you do trigger, take a trade, how much you're getting into, into the trade. Don't risk the same amount for every trade. When a trade like this, when the if one day I go into um if I go into a roulette table, I see a black check like this and I have a thousand dollars, I'm gonna dump the whole thousand dollars onto it. It's a freaking good trade, and you should take full advantage of it. Right. I mean, in this case, we have a very, very high probability. But in trading, sometimes you have a 60% chance of winning, a 40% chance of losing. Right. Sometimes you've got a 70% chance, a 30% chance of losing. But if you have, you know, a 40, 60, stay out of the trade. Right. Unless your risk reward is, you know, great. That means you for every you know one dollar you bet, you get ten dollars of returns. Okay. So hit rate and risk to reward go hand in hand. But just to take note of that, when it comes to trading, how much you're risking on a trade depends on how nice the setup is. All right, don't just randomly risk uh, any amount on the trade.
Okay. Now let's go on to the next section over here, right? Uh, a ideal lot size. You know, in trading in MT4, right? Um, you can pick a lot size. What is the ideal lot size to trade? Anyone want to take a guess? Anyone want to take a guess? What is the ideal lot size? Okay, Rodelio is saying it depends. Ariel is saying it's two lots. Michael is saying it's 100 lots. I didn't know 100 lots is huge, man. Alex is saying it's 10. Jeffrey is saying it's one. It depends on the size of the account. I like the answer. Stop loss and capital depends on the capital. Okay, some really good answers here. Standard 20, right? Okay, <laughs> a couple of answers here. Okay, okay. Good stuff. It depends on the capital. That's right. I love your answers, right? So it actually depends on the capital. There is, I cannot tell you that the ideal lot size is 10 lots, right? So it depends on the risk, right? Depends on the size of capital. Exactly. I like the answer by Quabana, right? Depends on the risk. Um, someone said depends on the stop loss too, right? Yes, at one, that's correct. Yes. <laughs> so it depends on a couple of things. Depends on a couple of things. Let, let me show you what I mean. Okay. Um, let's just say we have an example over here. We have uh, our account size is $50,000, right? 1% of the account is 500, right? 2% is 1,000, 3% is 1,005. You know, I have a 50 pip stop loss and I got 90 pip take profit, right? What you want to take note of is that let me see if I have it over here. How much you risk affects the lot size you trade, right? Notice that if I put in one lot, right? I'm putting in one lot, I'm risking 1% of my account, right? I'm putting in 0 0.1 lot, I'm risking 0.1% of my account, right? If I put two lots, in this case, I'm risking 2% two, uh, 2 of my account, right? But how much you risk affects the lot size you trade. And that also affects based on the stop loss, okay? Based on your stop loss distance. Because if I got one lot here and with 50 pips, 50 pips at one lot, if I get stopped, I'm going to lose $500. If I have a 100 pips stop loss all the way up to here, if I got a 100 pips stop loss, right? And I put the same uh, one lot, right? I end up risking $1,000 on the trade. So remember, you need to know what is your stop loss distance, how much you're risking. You know, once you combine these two, then you decide what is the lot size you want to trade. Okay, then you decide what is the lot size you want to trade. Now, I got a, I got another question for you guys. Which trade is more profitable? Okay, this is setup A. 50 pips stop loss, 90 pips take profit. Andrew, we touch on that a little bit. Remember, 50, 90. Um, shucks, did I have it here? Oh man, I, I, I missed that one slide. <laughs> right, and then, and then, okay. We got one 50, 90, and we got one, um, sorry, 20. And we got setup B, which is 20 pip stop loss and 36 pip take profit. Right, 36 pip take profit. Which one is better? Which one is going to make you more money if you're risking 1% on the trade? Right, we got 50, 90. We got 50 pip stop loss and take profit and 90 pips. This is setup A. I got set up B. We got 20 pip stop loss and 36 pip take profit. Which one's gonna make you more money when you, when you risk 1% on the trade? See a couple of answers come true. Okay, okay, a couple of answers come true. Let's see if I can log in here. Okay. <laughs> Some of you guys are pretty quick to pick out that it is equal, right? Because um, 
50 divided by 20. Oh wait, no, 50 divided by 90, sorry, 90 divided by 50. 90 divided by 50 equals 1.8, right? 36 divided by 20 equals to 1.8. You notice, both will give you the same. A will give you 1.8 as your risk to reward. B will give you 1.8 as your risk to reward. They're both the same. So it's not about the number of pips you made. It's the risk to reward of your trade. So sometimes on Telegram, you know, you go into those Telegram group chats, right? You go into those Telegram group chats and you have people saying, uh, oh, I made 100 pips. I made 1,000 pips, right? Those, anytime you see someone say that, trust me, they have no idea what they're saying, <laughs> okay? Run like the wind because they clearly are trying to sell um, the cool aid. They're trying to sell the dream. You know, people, they're trying to sell to people who don't understand the concept of risk to reward, right? If I told you, I made 100 pips. I had 100 pips take profit. It hit my target. But my stop loss, my stop loss was 1,000 pips. What do you think? You'll be looking at me and you're saying, are you crazy, <laughs> right? That's a terrible trade. But if I hide away the stop loss and I say, guys, look at my trade, 100 pips. People think it's great. But how much do you risk to get the 100 trade? That's important. That's an important thing that not enough people talk about. That's an important thing that not enough people talk about, right? So I want to teach you guys, right? If you see people, um, if you see people uh, on Telegram, right? On Instagram talking about like how many pips they made, but they don't talk about the risk that they took to make it, run like the wind, okay? Run like the wind because more often than not, these guys don't know what they're doing, okay? Yeah, all right, so... What I'm going to do here, we have a little price, right? We have a little price, which I'm going to give you guys, right? It's a pretty cool trade manager. I'm going to show it to you. You search for best MT4 trade manager, the Forex Army, right? The site that I have, right? We are number one on YouTube, right? Uh, as the board, best MT4 trade manager that is in existence currently. You know, you can select your entry. You place it anywhere you want. Let me see if I can open the image in a new tab. Okay, select your entry. There you go. Put it anywhere you want. Select your take stop loss. Move it wherever you want over there. Select your take profit. Move it wherever you want. You can use up to two partial profits. You know, I can put one partial profit over here. One partial profit over here. Okay, break even. If you want, you can move it anywhere you want. Idea and validation, right? This is advanced tool, right? Um, if you don't want to use, you know, you can move your, your trading stop loss anywhere. If you don't want to use something, you can cancel off the trade. Uh, so this is the level where it's uh, cancel off. Once you're done, you adjust your resetting. One, two, three percent, the system will automatically calculate it for you. Okay, the trade is placed. You can move it up and down easily. Move it up, you know, you can move it up, move it down. However you please, it can easily be done, right? If you don't want to use any of the bars, Right. Let me see if I have it here. I yeah. If you are, if you don't use any of the bars, you can close them off. That means you can click a little cross at the top to remove them. Um, this costs money, but with a special partnership with I with Take Mill just for today's webinar, we're going to give it out for free. Right. If you just want this version, if you come on here, right, the full trade manager, you notice it's actually going to cost you one hundred and forty eight dollars. Okay, just to get it. What we're going to do now is we have a special promotion with um, Take Meal, right? One of the best that I've ever seen, okay? All you need to do is to send an email to webinars at takemeal.com, right? And send a CC to my email, personal email, desmondlzw at gmail.com. The subject title should be webinar review promotion, okay? Rate the webinar from one is to five, five being the best. Add in your, um, uh, tell them what do you like about the webinar? Okay, what do you like about the webinar? And what is your TickMill MT4 account number? If you don't have a TickMill account yet, please tell them that I will open one, right? Just tell them I will open one, right? And as long as you have a TickMill account, live account, we will activate it for you. 
Okay, so this is the only time ever in history where we're giving it out for free, right? It's 148 US dollars, so it's actually pretty expensive. Um, we are converting it for MT5. So if you want, you can send it in first, right? Um, we will convert it for MT5 in the next um, three weeks, if I'm not wrong. I mean, the process of converting it, but it's a little bit tough, right? But yeah, we're converting it to MT5, right? And oh yes, at the end of it, um, could you just write a small little sentence? Right, the sentence is um, I allow, I allow my, uh, is there a way I can type this out instead? No. I allow my uh, review, I allow my review uh, to be used for marketing purposes. Yeah, to be used for marketing purposes. The reason for this is because we are trying to, uh, we are trying to accumulate some reviews for our webinars. Right to get to, to start growing our VIP room, right? So we um we're trying to you know maybe I can just type it inside there. Let me just type it inside there for you. Um discard, right? Just come in here and um and say I allow my uh, review to be used for marketing uh purposes, right? So just just send this through. I'm gonna copy and paste the email for you guys. To use um, these are the two emails uh, yeah it can work on uh, it can work as long as it's on mt4 it will work right thank you Ariel right yeah I know it's amazing right it's a uh, it's honestly like um, let, let's uh, sorry this is my figma file right just let me find my yeah it's honestly like I said you know you search best mt4 trade manager on YouTube is number one result on YouTube right for the obvious reasons that is the best trade manager out there he has all these tools to help you be a better trader, manage your risk, stop loss, entry, take profit placement. Um, Ariel, use it, it works on MT4. It doesn't work on MT5 yet, right? That's why it's an MT4 trip manager, right? Um, I'm just going to show you the subject title over here, right? The subject title is webinar review um, promotion. This is the subject title and this is what you need, right? If you can write a longer review, that'll be very um, like, you know, uh, adding slightly longer part on what do you like about the webinar, right? That'll be great for us, right? <laughs> It'll be great for me. If, you can, if you're putting my name, that'll be great too, right? And we send you a free TFA, MD4 Trade Manager activated for your account. Okay, guys, right? I hope you, uh, yeah, it's, you know, um, if you want, you can also add in some part on what you like about Tickmill, right? For bonus points off, right? Uh, for bonus points, you can add in what you like about Tickmill, uh, the trading conditions, right? Um, we rarely ever do this. You've been, if those of you guys who have been through all my different webinars um, since the start, you know this is the first time we're actually giving out such a promotion. Otherwise, in the previous webinars, we don't even um, give any of this, right? But it's because it's a one-off thing. We are looking to collect some reviews to help us on our marketing, right? So please help me with this, right? Um, Richie is asking, how do you use um, the Fibonacci to fine-tune the take profit and stop loss, right? Let me see if I can throw in a... Um, a training chart for you over here. Charts. Okay, guys, you know, um, you can send in your questions. Anytime you have questions, just send it through, right? I'm just going to uh, answer some, um, some more advanced questions as they're coming in. So, for example, right, I'm just looking at this trade over here. I hope it works out, right? So, let me see. Let me see. Entry is right there. I'll show you how you can use it for stop loss and take profit. Okay, so in this example, let me see if I got a nicer, a nicer chart for you. Okay. So um, to do proper Fibonacci, um, let me do a H4. To do proper Fibonacci, right? Fibonacci uses this thing called zigzags. Okay. In this example, we might be thinking this could be a nice take profit level. Right, we could think this is a nice little take profit level. Fibonacci uh, on on Trading View, there's this thing called trend based fib extension. You click on it, right? You click on my um, click on the top here. It allows you to pick three points: one point, two points, three points. Now I'm going to zoom in here, right? I'm going to zoom in here. You notice that there is this. Um, I'm going to make it slightly thicker. I let me make it super thick. Yeah, I'm going to make it dots. Right, you can see 
there is this little dotted line that is supposed to follow prices very closely. The more closely you follow prices, the better, right? Fibonacci projections, there are three main Fibonacci projections that you use, right? It is mainly 61, 78, and 100%. Okay, in this example, 61% is already, you know, um, touched on. I'm just going to look at 78. You notice that my 78% Fibonacci projection is down here. So there's a chance that price will come down to here, okay? There's a good chance that price will come down to here. So having my take profit here is okay. However, if my if after drawing my Fibonacci, maybe my my Fibonacci projection is like over here. So instead of putting, oh sorry, it's over here. Instead of putting my take profit over here, I will move it up slightly to be in line with my Fibonacci, right? So this is an example um, by using Fibonacci projections to fine tune it. Usually the danger is when your Fibonacci projection is just slightly before your key level. In this case, my key level is over here. So I need to move it slightly higher just to make sure, ensure that my take profit is hit. All right, guys. So yeah, I hope that answers your question on how you can use it to fine tune. We had a question at the very beginning of the webinar. Hey, let me just find it back. Um, at the very, very beginning of the webinar, asking how... Um, Uh, by Alex. Uh, Alex is still here, guy. Yeah, Alex is still here. He was asking, explain how recession has led to central bank ra uh, raising rates. Okay. Um, oh, okay. And the stop loss, right? Let, let, let me explain the stop loss. So stop loss placement, right? Um, same thing. So imagine, I let me think of an example, an easy example. If this is the entry, Right, if we were saying that price is going to bounce from here, right? Price is going to bounce from here. Hey, let me let me think of another example. Okay. I got an example that we can use. Let me think. Let's just say we take a trade over here. We take a trade. This is our sell entry. Okay, let's just say this is our sell entry. Bam, this is our sell entry. Okay, we expect prices to come down to our take profit over here. Now, where is our stop loss? Right? So usually you might be thinking, okay, I'm going to put my stop loss. Maybe look at, um, look at price. Uh, price broke out from here. Or maybe price broke out from here. Let me see. Okay, got it. You can say price if you zoom in. Okay, I'm going to zoom in a bit over here. Bear with me. I zoom in over here and like, okay, this was a level where price, when, when price broke this level, it started to drop very strongly. So I'm going to put my stop loss over here. Now, what you can do is you can take a Fibonacci retracement and you fine tune it a little bit more. And like, okay, maybe it might be safer that uh, my send 8.6% is here. I might put it over here instead. Okay. I might move it to my uh, to this 78.6 instead of just putting it over here to give it that little bit of breathing space because if you put it over here, it's in the middle of 61, it's in the middle of 78. So maybe you give it a little bit of breathing space. Okay, what can happen from there? You know, price goes up, goes up. You notice it will have stopped you out over here. If you were over here, it will have stopped you out. But because you fine tune it to your, to your Fibonacci level, right? It gives you enough breathing space before price reverse from this level. So that's how you use stop loss uh, Fibonacci to kind of fine tune your stop loss placement. Okay. Now, uh, another thing, another thing that a, um, we want to do, another thing that we want to do. Uh, okay. Back to Alex, who has been very patiently waiting, right? Um, how does a recession lead to central bank increasing int interest rates? Uh, let, let me get that. Did I, did I get the question correct again? Did I get a question? Can you explain how risk recession can lead to central bank rising rates? Um, how, how risk relation, what does risk recession stand for? Okay, rather, it is not because of the recession that the central bank has increased interest rates. A lot of people know that recently the central bank increased the interest rates, right? Uh, by, I don't know, I think 50 or 75 basis points, right? And it is because they have raised their interest rates. That's why you're starting to see um, the stock markets 
um, dropped so strongly. And a lot of people are talking about, yes, if we are in a technical recession, right? It is because of the raising of interest rates, that's why it happens. Why did the interest rate happen? No, or why did the banks increase the interest rates, right? It's because, yes, it's to tame inflation. But the funny thing is, right, um, inflation was caused by two reasons. Firstly, it was because the banks were crazy, printing money like crazy, right? I mean, the, the central banks were just printing money like crazy, right, and during the uh, COVID, right? They were essentially just kind of kicking the can down the road, right? They're going to print so much money, we need to spur spending. And what that has done is that, you know, all the high-risk stocks, the growth stocks, they just kept borrowing money to spend and spend and spend, right? And that led to, you know, higher inflation. But on top of that, one or other thing also caused inflation to keep rising. And that was oil. The prices of oil kept going up and going up and going up. You and I, we drive cars, we pump petrols, it's very painful. Pump gas is really painful, right? With And oil happens to be a foundational item, meaning that once price of oil increases, your price of the, um, the shipment from China to your country or from wherever it is to your country is going to cost more. Going to cost more? They're going to cost more to, um, to ship it over. They're going to charge the consumers more. The cost of everything, anything that use machinery, that use oil, that use gas, right? The cost of driving, everything increases in price because of oil price increasing, right? When, and this also was one of the reasons that inflation went up. And then, you know, we're looking at times where inflation was like 8.6%. Then the Fed near, realized they needed to step in to increase interest rate to fight inflation. And when that happened, many of the high growth stocks that were just, you know, many of the Meta, Netflix, Tesla, they were just borrowing money to spend, right? Suddenly they're like, whoa, 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 that's, that's going to be expensive, right? I borrowed money previously when the interest rates were low. Now it's suddenly so expensive. Cut back, they start firing people. Uh, a lot of people start panicking. They start selling their stocks. That's why we're in a technical recession. Yes, there's fear surrounding central bank increasing interest rates because the inflation is still very high. Uh, so that's what we call about a soft landing or hard landing. Hard landing means that, yes, you know, people are going to get hit hard, basically. right? So it's whether the central banks can implement the proper policies to, so that you know, they can fight inflation without killing <laughs> the stock market. Correct? That's right, guys. I hope that answers your question. Um, I do want to encourage you guys, you know, especially on this live trading stuff, looking at trades together, tune in next week, right? Very fun session, live trading session together. Hopefully next week we'll have our, um, we'll have our VIP room up. Very, very awesome time. We're trading the markets together, right? Um, yes. Uh, yeah, hopefully that, uh, that that's available next week. Um, uh, that's right. Um, that's right, Richard. Yeah, Richard gave a very good point because central banks, if they look at their arsenal of weapons, they're like, oh crap, man, I only can increase interest rates. I can't do much, right? It's, there are a lot more things you can do that really, really fight inflation. Um, so, so Alex, um, Richard has gave a very good example of that. Remove supply bottlenecks and sanctions. You know, things that will really, really improve like the cost of goods being sent over. Previously, you know, if because of the sanctions, right, or maybe um, subsidies, right, um, the cost of, um, you, you, you could subsidize oil, for example, right? They can really, really subsidize oil, the prices of oil, right? They can remove the sanctions, right? Make the cost of goods cheaper when you're importing over. And that has a knock-on effect, you know, uh, on, on the entire industry. So that it's not going to be that expensive, right? Um, there are many ways they can do that, but if you're asking what can central bank do, nothing much. <laughs> central bank can do nothing much, right? They're kind of a little bit handicapped there. We are deviating a bit from our uh, webinar on trade management. So guys, you have questions on trade management. I Don't worry, I'll get to them. You can think about it. I can get to them next week in our webinar in the live trading because I will actually um, be uh, looking at some trades in real time. Pretty fun stuff, exciting stuff, lots of money to be made, I hope. Right. Um, so, you know, uh, you can leave those questions for Dan too. All right. Um, let me see um, if that's all. Right. Thank you very much for, um, for sticking with me through today's webinar. 
right? It's been a great time, right? I hope you guys sent in your reviews. I'll do my best to activate all of the accounts by the end of the week. If you're not a Tickmill client yet, please go tell them that you're going to register for an account so that, you know, they'll reserve a spot for you. Okay? Thank you very much, guys. It has been a great time, right? Uh, it's almost a whole bunch of you guys stayed throughout the entire webinar. Uh, stick with me, right? Stick with me. Next week, uh, we're going to be a recurring session every week. So stick with me. I'll make sure you guys do well in training. I'll take you guys to the next level. It'll be a fun time together. All right. Thank you very much. All right, Richard, take a look at that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Robert, Edison, uh, Carmen, right? I'm glad you learned. Thank you, uh, Reformina, right? Paul, Ariel, awesome guys. Thank you, Maria. I will catch you guys next week. Guys, remember, stay safe, trade safe. Peace out, guys. Peace out. Right. Yes, a webinar will be published on YouTube. All right. I'm glad you found this productive. Um, I might cover a bit on that, Andrew. All right. Thank you very much, guys. I'm gonna tuning off, gonna catch my wife for dinner. Uh and try to catch my baby before he falls asleep. <laughs> all right, all right. Cheers, man. Cheers. Peace out, guys. Uh next webinar schedule. All right, guys, just head to tickmill.com. Go to this webinars page over here right and go sign up for this yes i'm based in singapore richard i'm based in singapore i'm currently in raffles place right you can swing by my office if you want right and you can come in here uh and then yeah you can see see the different webinars that yeah, this is by me we got some awesome webinars by patrick and tune into the rest of them too right you want to sign up for the ultimate forex trading masterclass tune in over here okay um, um okay i will cover that next time Oh, you thought so? Are you in Singapore too, Richard? I wonder, is anyone in Singapore or Malaysia, right? Off topic a bit, right? Thank you, Ali Abu. <laughs> no, no, no. It, it's, trust me, uh, not all Singaporeans are that way. <laughs> Every country has its uh, funny stuff. Right. But I talk about Singapore as a nation. I feel like the way they govern it is pretty, it's not bad. It's not bad. Right. Okay. I hope to see you around soon, Richard. Um, I, uh, yeah, and hopefully a Premier League season will start soon. Yeah. <laughs> right. Thank you, Ariel. Thank you, Jonas. Right. Peace out, everyone. I'll catch you guys next week. Right. Remember to tune in for the session. If not, I'll be very sad if I miss you guys. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Take care and peace out, guys. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Enjoy the evening too, man, Richard. Okay. Adios and peace out.